You know what I've always wanted to do? I've always wanted to just really smack a golf ball right off the top of this hill. Right here. And I cut it. God damn. Welcome to the video, everybody. My name's Dichronic Euros here on this Destiny 2 video. And today, we're going to be showing you where the Xur is, his inventory, all of my recommendations and random rolls for uh, November 8, 2019. You can find him in his regular location on the EDZ, so just head over to the Winding Cove, make your way all the way up on top of this mountain, you can find him on top, probably next to a bunch of other guardians. This is a high overview of everything that he's got in his inventory, let's go ahead and talk about the weapon. So the Servers Plus One is a very special auto rifle, I like to think of it as basically an automatic shotgun with a obviously lesser damage because it's still a primary ammo weapon, but basically shoots erratic bullets from all gun barrels at the same time, it basically shoots like a spread of shots every time you fire and on top of that uh the spread shot package aiming this weapon reduces the spread of its projectiles now if you do end up getting its catalyst it makes it so you can hold the uh hold the reload button and you can swap to a tighter close range spread that shoots a little bit slower in my experience i still prefer the non uh tighter spread close range version because the other one just shoots faster and is more close range anyway as a general idea for this weapon uh i like it i think that it's a nice weapon i'm not sure if an end game is worth an exotic slot but it's definitely a lot of fun uh, and i would highly recommend you check it out because it really is it does feel like a kind of automatic shotgun uh, at close range but it obviously doesn't do the damage of a real shotgun Oh, and apparently it can kill enemies in like four shot headshots in the crucible. I assume if you hit all of the entire spread four of those times, uh, which sounds pretty powerful. Moving on, let's go ahead and talk about the Warlock exotic, the transverse of steps. Basically your speed boots for your Warlock, where spin sprint speed is increased. And after a short time of sprinting, your currently equipped weapon is automatically reloaded. Both of these things are very, very good. Moving faster is great for PvE, getting to different places quicker, on top of the fact that you also can escape danger. So in PvP, it's very effective escaping danger. If you like rushing around with shotguns, you can do it more quickly, and you're automatically reloading your weapon as you're sprinting. So. Everything works really well for an aggressive build in PvP. As far as the roll goes, it is a primary in mobility, a great synergy with this particular exotic, with a secondary in intellect, everything you could possibly want, with even a tertiary in recovery, a very above average roll uh, for an above average exotic for sure. I think I actually put this one in my top five Warlock one, so this is actually like a fantastic exotic if you don't have it. Moving on to the Hunter exotic, we have the Frosties, a returning Destiny 1 exotic, basically increase your grenade, melee, and dodge regeneration while sprinting and dodging increases your sprint speed so this is kind of a sprint boots a kind of specialty sprint boots but uh, the stompies are the actual sprint boots in my opinion i've never really found this one to be that useful sure you do get grenade melee and dodge energy just by sprinting which sounds like something nice to have but if uh, it's not really That's much you know it's like one two percent over like a few seconds it's it's really not worth very much to me. As far as the rolls go, mobility primary works well as a synergy. Secondary and strength works well if you're trying to run fast and get those melee hits. So it's say like an averaging roll on a, a below average exotic. And finally, the Titan exotic, probably one of the most useless exotics in the entire game. I think it was actually better in Destiny 1, and I think it was also useless in Destiny 1. Basically, you get an overshield while activating Fist of Havoc. Not only do you already get resistance while activating Fist of Havoc, it's also kind of difficult to kill somebody flying through the air with Fist of Havoc. Now, if you end up, you know, getting a shotgun every time you use your super, you might want to consider it, but usually if you don't hit the ground, you don't use the supers, so it's not an issue because you can just use it after you respond. So overall, an exotic that I've found does not have any particular uses. Uh, synergy with uh, with the resistant resilience and intellect obviously is very good synergy for this. So above average roll for a very piss poor exotic. Oh, and apparently, uh, oh yeah, there is an ornament to make it look like a, a jade. Uh, mask instead. That's pretty much it for the exotic gear. Make sure you're picking up your five of swords for high scoring nightfalls. And of course the invitation of the nine after you complete them you get some lore, you get a tier two powerful engram and the following Friday you can get your next one up to nine. And finally the faded engram. Guaranteed to give you an exotic you do not have from a year one and year two world drop. And that is pretty much it. That's the end of the video. Let me know in the questions. Question. Let me know in the comments down below if you had any questions. I'd be more than happy to help you out with those. But yeah. That's the end of it. My name is Benai Chronic, and I will see you guys on the next one. Alright, that's the only thing I'm gonna do for this public event. You can do it! See? Don't don't tell me I didn't help. Yeah, you saw I got two hits on that grenade. <laughs> yeah, I helped.